one and all, welcome back to Star Citizen with Omstall. So today, you can see we are still in Lorville and I have a multi-tool. Uh, currently the multi-tool in the game only does, uh, essentially it's a, a cutting tool. Um, I do know it's a multi-tool so they'll eventually add some changes there. Um, so we've got a look at Lorville during the day here. Um, this was directly after recording the last video, so interestingly enough, I got put onto a different server, and it was a different time of day on this server. I found that rather strange, but um, at the same time, it does kind of give us a nice little look at Loreville during the day, so we can mess around a, a short bit here. Uh, for the most part, though, the rest of the video will end up being Loreville at night. Uh, this is still the 3.3.5c patch, so there is still some performance issues and some asset popping issues, um, or LOD issues even, uh, kind of going on with the, the whole state of the game as I'm recording it here anyways. So, it is pretty nice. Uh, they've added in, of course, some sounds, uh, extra sound effects for the city, including um, having a, a voiceover advertisement woman, essentially. So here we are, Lorville in the day. It's funny, I had played uh, pretty much many, many hours on the last patch, uh, patch B, and it it worked much better than this patch, so I'm not sure what they did specifically, but we will try to manage. So just breathe in the, the sights of Loreville during the day here. So then we loaded back up later on and now we're back in the nighttime. Uh, so this is a probably close to midnight ish uh, in game. Just because towards the end of this video we'll actually see the sun start to rise. Uh, you can see I still have my trusty coffee cup in my hand that I am unable to drop. So that's going to be one of the things we're going to try to do is. Uh, make our way probably to the bar, I think, and somehow get rid of this damn coffee cup. It just won't let me put it down. So you can probably tell from my armor, I have been to Levski. Uh, that's where I was essentially before I uh, ended up reloading the game up here. plan on basically sticking with weekly releases on these videos for now um, until I get more time, which will probably not be until after the holiday season, just because every chance I get to work on a holiday I take uh, as long as I don't have anything else planned, which I don't usually. Lorville never sleeps, obviously, or they haven't implemented the, uh, the actual scheduled NPCs at this point. You can see the floating lights back there as I do a selfie cam. Uh, the floating lights in the background, though, they are essentially supposed to be like, I guess, flying cars or whatever. They're really just lights, and I don't know if they plan on expanding that in the future, or how they actually plan on doing it. 
I will have a video released of me uh, falling through the world underneath Levski and actually kind of running around underneath and you can see what looks like not a lot of detail um, going into the game. So it looks like there is a Connie here. I'm not sure if that's a player or an NPC. I'm pretty sure it's a player. I don't think they have the NPC uh, ships actually coming in here. Plus it's a little erratic movement for an NPC. But who knows? With the state of the game, it's always possible. cool at night though. They have uh, a lot of the lights of the city and you can see them from pretty far away. You see the they have like spotlights shining up for whatever reason I assume because it's easier to see from space. No clue. Probably because they have cargo runs coming in and out 24 hours a day or however many hours are in the day on Hurston. It is a super earth. I think it's uh, almost twice the size of earth. So. Let's go people, move it. People, it's, uh, it's just me, buddy, but all right. So yeah, they've got some, some NPCs voiced now. Uh, interesting. I think there's a bug here. Indeed, as you cross this threshold, you actually... It, the ground almost lights up like it's daytime outside. Let's try it from over here real quick. Yeah. Daytime? Nighttime. At least on the ground. Daytime. Nighttime. Alright, anyways. It is an alpha. Early alpha still. This is the very first planet, and this is uh, currently the largest city. Technically the first city that you get to uh, experience in the game. So lots of work to do, lots of things to, to work out, bugs and whatnot. There you can see uh, the security tower kind of looks over this area here. This is where the workers live, L19. The workers are essentially contracted. You can even hear from some of the the uh, speech from the lady there that she's talking about. Yeah, yeah, you can get a contract and get guaranteed work <laughs> as you're basically paying Hurston back. I I try to set this coffee cup down multiple places throughout my journey to the bar. Never quite find a place to do so because it just won't leave my hand. So we're heading to Leston Square, and here they have uh, the Mercy Hospital, and we are looking for the bar. This is uh, always funny here. The facility has worked zero days without an accident. And of course they do have these uh, air quality index signs up. I'm not so sure I would trust it because it's coming from Hurston and they're not known for treating their employees the greatest so they might just say, you know, yeah, it's satisfactory. It's really not good for you, but good enough, right? Alright, so m and let's hop into here. Still lots of OCS uh, popping issues. I, I assume it's from OCS given that that's essentially what it does, streams and objects, and 
it's it's doing so at a, a pretty poor rate. Didn't do that last patch for me, so I'm not really sure. Alright, so let's go ahead and sit down. Hey. I I think I dropped my coffee cup. Just by sitting down. Well if I'd have known that I would have tried to just sit down. Mess with the camera here, see if we can actually see where the coffee cup went. Of course my camera's all messed up. Let me change this up real quick. Or slowly, because that's how the cinematic camera works right now. Yeah, sure enough. Right. Need something. Well, I will have a, a beer. Yep, coming right up. There's no beer in my hand. No, not in either hand. You've done nothing, sir. Wait, are you pouring my beer in a glass? It's okay. First, you didn't pour anything. Uh, what? You're a terrible bartender. Yeah, I said I wanted a beer, not a whiskey. Looks like coffee. It's a little dark for, for whiskey. Could be the lighting in here, I suppose. So you can set it pretty much anywhere. It wants you to set it in the green, of course, but you can even throw it if you go far enough. If you don't hold it, of course, you just drop it. Oh, he actually placed that one in front of me. And just like they mentioned in the demo at Citizen Con, it looks like the uh, liquid is still... Gravity isn't affecting the liquid quite So let's hold this down and see if we can really throw it. Sure, it disappeared, but whatever. Head. No, let's just let's just put it on his shoulder. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm done here. But you do know this is a bar, right? For drinking. something for you here. Oh, what do you think of that? I'll put it away. Ah, oh, just, I can't put it away. I do love some of the emotes on here. Let's do coffee cup. So, overall, I wish I would have recorded this when all this popping stuff wasn't happening but we'll settle for this for now. Obviously, as I continue to add stuff, I'm always going to keep recording content and uploading whatever I can, when I can. And of course, once more time becomes available, hopefully the content will get better. Uh, also, if you guys have any requests, anything that you want to see, just go ahead and let me know. I'll do what I can do it. Uh, also, since this is really close to the time, on November 23rd, 2018 here, they are doing the uh, anniversary sale and the free fly event, which would allow anybody who is interested, uh, you can actually 
sign up for the game and you can fly any flyable ship in the game, um, which is really cool. Uh, you can actually, if you if you decide you want to purchase the game, uh, get into it, you want an additional 5,000 UEC, that's the in-game currency, use the referral code in my description of the video below. That will uh, help both of us out in a way. As long as I get enough referrals, I think I end up getting free ships or something like that. Of course, all ships are purchasable in the game. Uh, you do have to have a starter package, and I would recommend waiting until the 23rd uh, if you want to get a starter package, because they will probably be on sale as well. I think they're currently at $45, um, and you get either a Mustang or an Aurora, whichever one you choose. Uh, I recommend the Mustang. I find it's a better overall ship. Authorized personnel only. All right, man. Get your finger out of my face. But I understand. Um, I believe on the anniversary sale last year, it dropped it to $35, though. So you got a little bit of a discount. Uh, but beyond that, of course, um, definitely use my referral code and it will get you a little extra head start on cash since that's a little hard to get here. Hey, can I order food from you? Are you, are you ignoring me? I want the big bennies. have a little something for you instead. It's it's my favorite emote by far. Uh, slash root does give you a couple other ones, but that's the one it's giving me right now and I'm happy with it. So this is the clothing, armor, and I guess multi-tool store here in Lorville. So you can see a bunch of helmets, all the different multi-tools. They're actually not different. They're the same multi-tool. These are the uh, plastic bag helmets that they have for... It says that you can actually use it for basically zero atmosphere as my guy disappears okay we'll just uh, put that back but um, I think it's really meant specifically as you can see this guy wearing it here looking at basically the same outfit he's wearing uh, it's it's essentially meant to to wear around well Hurston where it's polluted as all hell so these are some of the armors here. Uh, these are the undersuits that they have available. There's pretty much the same stuff that you can get from Port Olisar for the most part, um, with the exception of a couple things that you can only get on Polar Port Olisar right now, and this, um, which is basically the same thing here, except with the this has the RSI Odyssey undersuit, uh, but it's the Virgil. Uh, armor and it's it's basically the same thing on both of them. They're different helmet on this guy of course on the left here but we'll go ahead and uh, purchase this Cause yeah for the PTU right now they're they're giving us five million credits or five million alpha UEC on top of the UEC that we would normally start the game with I think I have like 70,000 UEC or something like that to start the game with normally. Um, but with the current state of the game, it's not currently easy to earn a, a good amount of UEC quickly and therefore purchase a ship. Or if you want to come in here and just start buying up all the armor, you know, get the whole armor set that you want. Not going to be so easy with uh, the little bits of money that you can earn doing missions currently and uh, 
mining and trading can earn you a decent amount, especially mining, but you have to have a prospector to do so. A prospector is 1.6 million UEC, so that takes uh, a long time to get to trying to trade, and if you're not into trading, like myself, then you're probably not going to want to do that. So this is what I ended up uh, going with and equipping. It's kind of a combination of my subscriber undersuit and armor, my arm armor. This is the helmet, uh, the Oracle helmet, I believe it's called. Um, I got that on Levski. You can also get it in Grim Hex. And then, of course, I just equipped a couple pieces from the uh, armor here. It looks like there's actually some clothing hanging up on the racks up top, but there's no way to actually get up there. Cool thing is, as you can see, they are actually objects, and you could purchase them if you could reach them or try them on. There's another outfit that they have on a mannequin, of course. Currently, the terminals are busted, so this guy's not going to talk to me. Um, so buying it off the rack in this patch is kind of the only way to get around freezing and crashing your your client. Uh, they did also add a new option when coming across a locked door like this. They have the override option. Interesting to see what that's going to end up being. Waiting for things to pop back in, of course. Alright, so we've got our armor that we essentially want to have. So as long as they don't reset the character, I won't have to keep doing that. Not that I really need it, I'm not really doing anything dangerous in first person right now. Not really, anyways. Keep it moving. kind of like bothering the guards. Probably not going to be a great idea eventually. I know for a bit there, if you bother them too much, they would actually shoot at you, or not if you bother them too much, I think it's just if you, if you had a crime stat, if you were a criminal. There's the windows to the bar. Everything is connected, so it's not faked or anything. Maria. I don't know why I was saying Mercy. Maria Hospital. There's the security tower there again. Kind of overlooks the whole area. So we're going to Reclamation and Disposal. That is the hall to... A Gladius, maybe? I'd have to check on that. Got a big claw here. Looks like it's got an Aurora cockpit being salvaged. Some dude on his lunch break, I guess. Or just his regular break. Can't vault over these or get behind here in any way, so. Figured I would try anyway. Especially given the the bugs I've come across already in this patch where I've been able to get to places I'm not supposed to be and then eventually bad things happen. It's interesting they look to be advertising their salvage in the quote unquote storefront windows, I guess. Funny, it looks like he's wearing aviators under there. Like he's just your typical cop. Alright, so this is the inside of the uh, reclamation salvage area. I guess you can. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I guess you can use the terminals eventually to uh, sell your salvage. Unfortunately, his voice doesn't come through most of the time. 
they haven't fully implemented him, so he's not completely done yet. If you want to hear what he says, I highly recommend going and watching the CitizenCon 2948 uh, or 2018 demo, live stage demo that they did. And uh, how may I help you? Well, uh, aha. Uh, yeah, so you can sell scrap. I'm looking for work. I can't, can't tell what you're saying to me. So I'm not sure if he was supposed to send me something there like he did in the live demo that they had or what. Um, check the contracts here. No. No. Definitely not. Yeah. No. So yeah, it doesn't look like uh doesn't look like it. I'm try something else here. Maybe I can get around not understanding what he says by turning subtitles on. not a click to talk to, he is an approach to talk to. I think there's a terminal on the other side as well. Yep. Anything interesting back here? Not particularly. And I have tried to climb or crawl under this gate. It doesn't work. Can't get back there. Here we go. Still can't hear him and not getting subtitles. Saw something flash there for a moment. <laughs> Let's say uh, we've got some scrap to sell. Well then, access oh. the terminal over there, and we'll get you started. Yeah, no idea what he's saying there. Um, their facial capture is good enough that you could pretty much read his lips. Or read the subtitles if they actually worked, but they're not. It is what it is. We'll try the uh, looking for work one more time. It looks like he doesn't have anything at the moment, I think is what I kind of read there um, on his face and reading his lips as best I can. So uh, we'll just go ahead and turn these back off because, you know, screw subtitles. Immersion. It's all about the immersion, you know, as you turn around and everything just kind of pops into view, just like real life. 
Okay, let's uh, go ahead and head to the uh, the metro station. You'll get to see one of the trains. I'm actually going to take a train to one of the perimeter gates and get my Ursa rover out and drive around. Given the length this video has already reached, we'll probably do the Ursa rover portion in the next video. So if you're interested to see that, stay tuned. Make sure you hit the subscribe and notify bell if you want to know when that video comes up. I don't put too many videos up right now, as I mentioned, so... Yeah, what can it hurt, right? Why not consider calling Lorville home? See that you're finally ready to take the plunge on a used ship? Swing by the New Deal shipyard for Also, as I mentioned before, please make sure to comment below. I'm always up for hearing criticism, good or bad, about how I'm doing, especially since I am still new to this. And uh, anything that I can do to improve, any suggestions you have to do so, or again, any suggestions for content, always up to uh, hear ideas. So on the right side here is to the perimeter, the left side would have taken us to the spaceport, Tesa spaceport. You see there's multiple gates, there's six gates total. Um, if I had, had gone up to the right, that would take me to gate five and six train stations. These take me to one and two on the left here. And Keep it going, people. Uh, three and four would have been to the right down there. Yeah, I guess he's not got nothing to say. Um, one of the things they plan on doing, because currently this, the trains actually only run point A to point B and back, but they do plan on having essentially the trains, I guess, running on a slightly different schedule where maybe you have one going from gate 1 to gate 2, then it goes to gate 3 to gate 4 to gate 5, gate 6, like they have the perimeter line. They'll have multiple trains running that. Um, so that you can kind of move between the gates themselves and then Trespassing or also of course having you know those trains that run defense. still point A to point B and back essentially from the the uh, metro station to the gates and then there's going to be the business district and there's also the uh, Tessa spaceport so it's going to be interesting as they continue to add things, not only to Loreville, but to the game in general, uh, what they're going to do with their transit systems like this. Ah, so there, the sun is starting to come up, and you can see because of the massive amount of pollution on Hurston, there's a very red sunset, sunset, sunrise, sorry. There's the uh, business district building right there. That is coming in the next major patch, 3.4. Let's go ahead and get up so we can get a better look at this sun sunrise coming up over Lorville here. At the fidelity of this game, They've accomplished a lot. It's it's pretty amazing. Um, the planet that we're on right now is it has a uh, equatorial radius of over eleven thousand kilometers. Um, it's it's just massive. Earth is six thousand some odd kilometer uh, equatorial radius. So, like I said, it's it's almost twice the size of Earth, and uh, it's it's pretty massive now. The planets are, got some cool uh, skyscraper buildings back in here too. The planets are essentially one sixth of the scale of what they would be in real life. So, you know, instead of Earth having a 6,000 whatever kilometer uh, radius, it would actually have a 1,000 kilometer radius um, versus, you know, the full size of the planet that would just be uh, a lot of empty space that they would have to fill even with their procedural generation that's a lot of work for them uh, it's a lot of work for them as is 
So for them to do something on this scale, you know, so this is, I guess, technically a 2,000 kilometer uh, ish radius, since it's about twice the size of Earth and it's one sixth the scale. So that makes sense. Um, the moons, the distance between the moons and the planets from their stars and all that, um, basically all the orbital distances are, I think, one tenth the scale of what they would be, um, which does a lot of cool things. One, it makes travel time a little bit less uh, painful. And two, it actually makes it so you get these really cool uh, vistas where you have these giant moons rising up over the horizon, you know, that are much closer than they would be normally. Um, although the moons here on Hurston are, are pretty far away from the planet itself. And you get a, uh, just, just the tiny little dots of them in the sky. I mean, you can still definitely see them pretty well, but they're, you know, Earth's moon's kind of a unique thing. It's, it's so massive and it's so close to the planet that you can you can see it a lot better than you can uh, compared to most other planets and their moons that we know of. So, looks like they have two trains in total set up to run here. This one isn't actually running. You can see there's no timer countdown or anything. So I think that's going to be the actual train that would then travel to the next gate um, versus the one that we just got off which I think is going to be that point A to point B you know it's just going to go from gate one to uh, the metro station whereas the one behind us there is probably going to go on to gate two be considerate to your fellow travelers do not lock doors Sometimes you just can't tell right now if it's a player or an NPC. Could be a player just standing still. That guy has no shoes on. He must live just outside the gate. There are slums outside the gate, which I will show you a little bit of uh, on the next video. Again, because we're getting pretty close to time here. As I mentioned, I want to go ahead and make sure that I uh, keep these as close to 30 minutes as I can. I know we're going over already. So I think from here we'll go ahead and uh, bother this guard a bit and then we'll cut the video off and we'll pick up kind of where we where we left off. Keep it going people. All right guys, well thank you for watching again. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to keep uploading what I can when I can. Alright, uh, just make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you liked it, hit the dislike if you disliked it, and uh, if you do dislike it, please leave a comment so I can know why.